Hi friends, welcome to the homestead. I'm so glad you dropped by today. Grab yourself a drink and let's see what we can get into today. Welcome back to the Homestead Kitchen. Uh, today is all about pumpkins. We got pumpkins that have got to be dealt with. Um, these, unfortunately, as I said, were not ones that I had grown, um, but these were gifted to me, and I do not want to waste them. I do not want them to rot before we get to use them. Um, I've actually processed several of these. I think I processed maybe eight or ten already, and we still have two, four, six, eight, nine of the small sugar pumpkins and we've got one, two, three of the larger pumpkins that we need to process. And so today I wanted to show you how I do that. Um, I've actually made pumpkin pies out of these and that is a very, very good. And that's gonna be a recipe that I'll share with you uh, later on. And today I just wanna get these processed. I wanna get them roasted. I wanna get them off the um, skins and get them processed so that we can put them in the freezer so we can make pies with them later on. Thanks for joining me today. First thing that I have today, you can see I've got my cutting board. I've got two different knives today. I've got two very, very sharp knives, um, one to cut with, and I've got this one if necessary. Sometimes it just depends on how tough it is, which knife that I'll use. I've got my cookie sheet that I'm gonna spray down, and I've got my pumpkins. I've also got a bucket over here for um, seeds and things like that. Those will get to the chickens. The oven is preheated, and it's ready to go. I've got it at 375, and we're gonna roast these pumpkins today. We'll probably roast them about four or five at a time. Uh, or if I can get two cookie sheets in there, we'll try to do that as well. So the first thing that I like to do is just simply cut it. And I just simply cut it in half. And sometimes the longer knife is better than this knife. You can see it just falls apart. And I've actually saved seeds from the first ones that I've done. I wanna to try to plant those in the spring or maybe get closer to June because I'd like to raise some of my own. But what we're gonna do with these today is we're just gonna scoop these out and we're gonna put these in the bucket for the chickens. My chickens love these. And so we're gonna, we're gonna give our chickens just a little bit of a treat today. So it's really, really simple. We just take our spoon and you can do this with your hand. You can take this out and you can pull out all the insides, uh, all the stringy stuff. I'm sure it has a name, but I don't know what it is. And all the seeds, and we just can get those out as many as we can. And then we're actually gonna have to scrape the inside, which is really what the spoon is for, because we wanna get as much of this inside stringiness out uh, as we can. So the first thing I do is I just gut it, and then I gut the other half, and then I wanna show you exactly what we do and how we get them ready to roast. All right, so here we go. We've got as much of that out as we can pull with just our fingers. So I'm gonna set our scrap bucket aside for our chickens. I find that it's easier if I just turn it face down with the cut side down and then just cut through it again and kind of quarter the pumpkin. I find that that's a little bit easier for me to deal with. And I'm not gonna worry about this little scabby area on it. Somewhere along the way, this one got a little got a little bumped and had formed a scab on it. Not gonna worry about that because that's not going to affect the inside. So now that I have my pumpkin, I'm just gonna take my spoon and I want to scrape. And you wanna scrape this down to get all of that inside out. And you wanna get it to where it's down. It's very, very smooth. You're actually gonna have to take a little bit of the meat of the inside out to get all of that stringiness out. And you wanna get it down to where it is just very, very smooth. And then you'll be ready to roast them. So I'm gonna go ahead and take all of this out and get all of this out of the way. Sometimes on the end, you might have to take your knife and get just a little chop there, a little slice of some of that out because you wanna get as much out as you can. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good, pretty clean. You can see how much we got out of that. And so then what I do is I just take it and I just lay it face up on my cookie sheet. And that's what I'm gonna do with the rest of these. Now, if you choose to save some seeds from a pumpkin that you've grown or a pumpkin that you've bought, one thing that I do is I try to get all of this stringy stuff off 
and it takes time to do that. So what I would do is I would actually come in and pull the seeds off and then I put them on a paper towel or some newspaper. Newsprint's great if you have it. And you wanna pick out, you know, let them, and just leave them to dry. And then once they're dry, you can go through and pick out the seeds that you wanna save. You wanna pick out the ones that are the biggest, the ones that are the healthiest looking, um, if the ones that are full, you know, they wanna be, you want them to be full because that means they are fully developed and they are mature enough to create a new plant of their own. Now, these, as I said, were gifted to me. I hope, don't know if these, these seeds had been treated or the plant had been treated. You know, sometimes now you get things that when you try to plant from seeds, the original parent plant seeds have been treated so that any seeds that it produces does not germinate very well. The germination rate's not good um, and they won't always produce another plant. So I don't know about these. So that's, a, that's part of the experiment of gardening that I'm gonna be seeing about. But I did save quite a few just to try. Okay, so here we go with the round two. So you can see I got four across the uh, first part of half of the tray, and I think I can get these four on the second half, and then I'm gonna have to get another tray so that I can roast more than two at a time. All right, so we have a tray that has um, eight pieces. That's two of the pumpkins. So now what we wanna do is I wanna clean my hands up, and we're ready to put this in a hot oven. Got it at 375, and it's ready to take care and start roasting this pan. Turn you around and let you see what we've got here. We've got a pretty good warm pan here of pumpkin. And so we kind of let it cool just a little bit. And I think we're ready to start taking it out. So what I've got is I've got a bowl that we're gonna put all of the meat in that we're going to use to process. I've got a very big spoon that I'm gonna use. It's pretty good, very thin. So I'm gonna use it to scrape the pumpkin out Okay, so I have another bowl that we can put the rinds in. And so the easiest way that I do this is just, a lot of times if it's warm, you can sometimes just peel the rind off. You can see it's just coming off in sheets. Um, and we'll just take the rind off. And we'll just throw it out. The chickens and the deer will like that. And that's one way that you can do it. And we'll take the good meat that we're gonna use. We're gonna put it in that bowl and and just peel that off. Now we can also take the spoon and we can scrape it off. Now the thing with the spoon that I have found is if you use a spoon, you're going to have to be very careful not to cut down into that rind too much or you'll have that rind in with the rest of your good meat for your pumpkin that you don't wanna get that in there it may alter the taste just a little bit. So I find that if I can't, if I can peel it off, that's usually what I do. Now, obviously your meat for your pumpkin's gonna be just a little bit darker there in the center where it was sitting on the pan cooking while it was in the oven roasting. Um, and for all of that. It's not gonna hurt it. friends and welcome back to the Homestead Kitchen. It is the next day and I want to continue processing these pumpkins. Uh, 
yesterday I showed you how that you can mix up your pumpkin using just your mixer. But my favorite way is what I want to show you today. This is a food meal. So it's called a tomato strainer. Um, it's electric and I'll try to put a link in the comments or a link down in the show notes about what this is and where it came from. But my husband got me this one. He and my daughter bought it for me a couple years ago for Christmas. And it's the second one that I've owned. I wore the first one out. Um, and I love this thing. I use it for, for tomatoes, especially during tomato season. Uh, it is a definite tool that I go to. It makes processing tomatoes so easy. And I love it, especially when I'm getting seeds and pulp out of my tomatoes. So it's really, really great. Um, but I've also learned that I can use it for pumpkin. And so what it has is it has a, um, a gear and it pushes an auger and you put the food down in here, turn the machine on and you push the food down through and the auger pushes it out. Out of this end, uh, let me wrench this, you can't see it quite like it need to. Out of this end comes seeds and pulp and anything that doesn't need to stay in and then through here uh, comes what we're going to use to preserve. So what I've done is I took the pumpkin back out of the refrigerator. It was cold, so I just put it back in the microwave for just a couple minutes because I find that it goes through the processor better and easier if it is uh, a little warmer. So then I've just taken my slotted spoon, I've just started mashing it up and just kind of breaking it up into chunks. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple chunks and I'm gonna put it in the bowl, just like that. And then I've got my handy dandy plunger and I'm going to turn it on and you're gonna see what comes out. Here we go. As you can see, uh, we've got a lot coming out here. We've got things like this would be where your seeds would come out, as I said, pulp that you don't want to keep. But then as you see here, it just totally mashes up that pumpkin and it just gets it ready so that when I'm ready to start putting it in my freezer bags, it is the consistency of what you would pretty much get out of a can at the store. It just breaks those fibers down and makes it pretty smooth, as you can see. All right. Now, if this were tomatoes, of course, the tomatoes would just flow right down into the bowl and then the seeds and the, um, the seeds and the skins would come out here in this container. Um, what's coming out now, you can see it's still pretty, pretty fibrous. So these are the fibers that didn't get broken down. Let me bring it over here where it needs to be. Um, but these are the fibers that generally didn't get broken down. And so usually I'll just throw those to the chickens. And then if you look at what's going on here, you can see it's all, it's just very, very broken down. It is just about the consistency of what you would get at the store. So I'm gonna scrape all this off and get this cleaned up and then we'll move on to the next step. friends so I've just made uh, three bags with my food saver um, I'm using my food saver so that I can put the pumpkin in the freezer you really don't need to can in a pressure canner pumpkin the reason why that they don't recommend that is that it is so thick that it's very hard to get everything in the center up to temperature so that you can kill off any um, pathogens or anything that might possibly make you or your family sick so it's not recommended to can it so we freeze it and so I like to freeze it in two cup portions 
because that's about what you would get in a can, just a normal size can is 15 ounces or 15.5 ounces. So what I do is I usually just make a bag and I usually always try to label it. And I'm gonna put about two cups in here, which is about 16 ounces. Um, I've done three bags that may be too many or it may not be enough, we'll see. All right, so what I've got is my, to determine my two cups, I can measure it out in one cup portions it's easy to do too, or I can use a food scale. This is a kitchen scale and it uh, will weigh it out in ounces. And so what I generally do is turn on my scale and let it calibrate. And then I set my little um, bowl on it and this weighs, the bowl itself is one ounce. So I need to put about 17 ounces worth of pumpkin in here before I then fill my bag. So I've got 12, 14 ounces, so I need 17 ounces, 15, okay, that's 17, two, so that's close enough. So, I'm going to wash my finger, should never do that, by the way, clean my spoon off, and we will fill this back. Now, the reason I generally do it this way instead of with a cup is because I want to be sure that I get it uh, as much in here down in the corners. And then it makes it a little bit easier as I am uh, vacuum sealing it to really, really spread it out so that it can lie flat while it's in my freezer. Because it's got to be something that I can stack in my freezer easily or it's just not going to work for me. All right, so I've got the pumpkin in here. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum seal this one. Um, on the vacuum sealer on my food saver, of course you wanna put your bag down, the little edge of your bag down in the tray, close the lid and lock it. Now because this is a wet food, I'm changing this to moist and I'm changing this to gentle and then I'm gonna click vacuum and seal. flat container of two cups of pumpkin that I can put in my freezer and this is just about enough for one pie. So, so friends that wraps up our pumpkin preserving for today. We out of all of those sugar pie pumpkins we were able to get six two cup portions. That's enough for one pie. So we were able now we can bless our family, our friends, our loved one or those in need with pumpkin pies or pumpkin bread, pumpkin soup or pumpkin biscotti, just the, the possibilities are endless. So thank you for joining me today. If you like what this content was all about, if you would give me a thumbs up and just let me know in the comments, how are some ways that you preserve pumpkin or if you've got some other things that you think I should try or other things, suggestions for videos you'd like to see, just drop those in the comments. And as always, you can go ahead and share it on your social media if you like. That would be a way to say thank you for this content and let me know that you like it. Until our next video, bye friends.